What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here with your $1,400 third stimulus check update and fourth stimulus check update coming in the near future. I also have some important information for you guys uh, for unemployment. If you received any unemployment income in 2020, I got an important detail for you. Actually, two important details for you. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the $1,400 stimulus checks with the delays and the upcoming fourth stimulus check package. All sorts of things to talk about. Let's jump right in. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new videos. President Joe Biden and the White House is putting out a new campaign to shore up more support for the third stimulus check package, even though his, it has already passed and create more favorable kind of support for them going forward, as well as start garnishing support for the fourth stimulus check package coming in the near future. President Biden on Monday went to the cameras to tout the COVID-19 relief package he signed into law last week, as well as his administration's effort to make it work. Biden has set a new goal of sending out 100 million relief checks or stimulus checks in the next 10 days and tapped an experienced economic advisor to oversee implementation of the massive coronavirus relief package likely to be a pinnacle of his time in office. The Biden administration is embarking on a coordinated effort to tout the rescue package in states across the country this week to underscore its popularity across segments of the population and highlight the tangible aspects of the bill, including the $1,400 direct payments and funding for vaccines and school reopenings. At the same time, the administration is under pressure to get assistance out as quickly as possible. This is coming as many major national banks are delaying the payments that are being direct deposits and making them pending for days. Democrats are hoping for a swift implementation of this bill, Biden's first major legislative accomplishment as president, and it's critical to helping Americans and it's important politically. This also comes as the number two Senate Democrat, who is Dick Durbin in the Senate, is calling for and just gave a speech to get rid of the filibuster rule in the Senate. That's the rule that requires them to get 60 votes in the Senate instead of just a simple majority of 50 or 51 votes, like the House of Representatives have. The House of Representatives literally only needs one vote more than 50%, as there's hundreds, uh, over 400 people in the House of Representatives. Literally a 60% uh, threshold in the House would kill almost every bill that wasn't a unanimous 100% um, you know, bipartisan bill. Any bill that wasn't bipartisan, 60% would be horrific in the House. However, that is the rule that is in the Senate. In fact, it used to be 67 votes, but they actually got rid of that uh, in the near past because it was just way too many votes to pass anything that wasn't basically unanimous. And the Democrats are now considering or trying to do in the near future, get rid of that completely so that they would make it only a 50 or 51 vote requirement to pass the bill. Remember, the Democrats have 50 uh, Democrats in the Senate and 50 Republicans in the Senate. So it's a tie. So if it's a tie and 50 say yes and 50 say no, like we've seen in the third stimulus check package, then the tiebreaker vote goes to the vice president, which would be the simple majority. And that is what happened with the reconciliation process and the third stimulus check bill. Now, the Democrats can do this up to nine times within the next couple years and pass it through the reconciliation process. However, there's a lot of other rules to that. Number one is it has to affect the budget. For example, the Senate parliamentarian ruled that they can't include the $15 an hour minimum wage in there because it didn't affect the budget or at least enough to be considered and pass the bird rule. That means you it has to affect the federal budget. And there's all sorts of different provisions and things that they can and can't do by passing bills through reconciliation. If they get rid of the filibuster sometime this year, anytime this year, anytime at all, that would make it just a simple majority vote to pass bills in the Senate. This would also count in the future and forever. So when the Republicans or if and when the Republicans ever take back the Senate, which at this point would only be one seat, it would be the same thing for Republicans, same thing for Democrats. It would be for future going. So it would make bills a lot easier to pass in the Senate, whether it's Democratic control or Republican control in the future. 
Here's Senator Dick Durbin on the filibuster and getting rid of it. The filibuster is still making a mockery of American democracy. The filibuster is still being misused by some senators to block legislation urgently needed and supported by a strong majority of the American people. Rather than protecting the finely balanced system our founders created, today's filibuster throws the system out of balance, giving one half of one branch of government what amounts to veto over the rest of government. It promotes gridlock, not good governance. If they are able to get rid of the filibuster this year, it would make all sorts of bills and packages much easier to pass, such as student loan forgiveness, $200 per month Social Security increase, $15,000 home buyer credit, the fourth stimulus check package, all sorts of different packages in the minimum wage even, possibly if they got enough votes from their Democratic colleagues to pass the minimum wage. I don't think they're going to be able to pass it at 15, but we'll see. I think they're going to be able to pass it at 10 or $11 an hour. But all these bills would make it easier to pass, and even in the future for Republicans too. So uh, it will be interesting to see if they're able to get rid of that here uh, within the near future. Also, let me clarify a couple very important details for anybody that has had unemployment income in 2020. The third stimulus check package passed a provision, which is a, a really good provision for anybody who had unemployment income. The first $10,200 of unemployment income you had last year, so this is retroactive for 2020 for last year, that that first $10,200 will not be counted as taxable income. This will likely save you between $1,000 or $2,000 depending on your tax bracket, it could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less. However, there's a fine detail in here um, that I want to make clear for you guys, and that it's per person, okay? So that means a married couple could get up to $20,400 of unemployment income that will not be taxable. So, but th there's a very point here I, I want to really make sure to hammer home. I had a question from a viewer and he said, Jimmy, did you know that it's $20,000 for a couple? I said, yeah, it's per person. And um, I, I quickly realized that um, a lot of people might be getting a detail confused. So yes, it's it's $20,400. We'll just say $20,000 for round numbers here, $10,000 per person. Um, but you have to be very clear here on this detail. So um, for example, we'll just say me and my wife. If me and my wife um, last year got unemployment income, it's per person, okay? So for example, if I got 25,000 last year of unemployment income, I can't claim 20,000, okay? It's 20,000 for a couple, but it's 10,000 per person, $10,200 max per person. So for example, if I had 25,000 and Laura had zero, my wife, um, I can't claim 20,000, okay? I can still only claim 10,200. Now, if she had 5,000 and I had 20,000, I would be able to claim the 10,200 and she would be able to claim the 5,000. It's up to $10,000 per person. Okay, so you double that for a couple because it's two people, but it's still a maximum of $10,200 for one person. I hope that makes sense. I hope that I made that clear. Let me know if I made that clear down below in the comments. By the way, I got the, this fine detail from my wife's father, Mike, who's been our accountant for ever. I've been with Laura for 17 years, I think. Yeah, and we've been married for this year will be our 10th year anniversary, right? So we were together for seven years before and then uh, married for this year will be our 10th year anniversary on uh, September 4th. So yeah, he's been our accountant forever. He was an accountant at a corporate, uh, large corporation for like 30 years. So he knows what he's talking about. In fact, he linked me to the IRS guidance on here is the IRS guidance, and you can see here it excludes income of up to $10,000 paid in 2020, which means you don't have to pay taxes on that. If you're married, each spouse receiving unemployment compensation doesn't have to pay tax on unemployment compensation of up to $10,000, okay? Each spouse, $10,200. Amounts over $10,000 for each individual are still taxable. Okay, and of course, you're, this is for incomes of 150000 or less. Uh, again, note, amounts over $10,000, $10,200 for each individual are still taxable. Okay, hope that makes it clear. On the $1,400 stimulus checks, there's a lot of people uh, upset that uh, the stimulus checks are delayed for a lot of people. And so number one is that the direct deposits 
the IRS sent out some guidance that said that they weren't even supposed to send out the direct deposits until uh, the 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day, which is Wednesday. However, the IRS actually went ahead and sent them out, and a lot of people literally already have them. But a lot of people have them, and they're pending. And some banks are using this, uh, particularly JP uh, Morgan and Wells Fargo, potentially a lot of other ones such as Bank of America and Huntington are not going to release the funds until March 17th. And a lot of people are very upset about this. The banks are trying to say it's because the IRS said not to release them until the 17th. And some banks are saying that you've got to wait for the money to clear. And it's creating <laughs> quite the scandal as um, many people have done the math and can figure out that banks are literally making millions or tens of millions of dollars per day uh, by doing this tactic of delaying the stimulus checks. However, uh, it remains to be seen if they're going to even try to delay them past the 17th, which is still two more days. And a lot of this money came in pending over the weekend. So some of these banks are literally going to be holding your money pending for four or five or several days, which is making a lot of people very unhappy. The stimulus checks themselves have not even been sent out yet. The IRS is going to try to start printing them this week. This is why direct deposits are still always faster, even if there's a few days delay than paper checks. I will be keeping you up to date. Remember, even if you are on direct deposit, you could get a stimulus check sent to you in the mail. And this is because the IRS, if they have any problem sending the direct deposit to you, it'll bounce back. They're going to go uh, and then they'll send you a paper check. They go off your most recent tax return. So if you haven't filed your 2020 tax return, then, well, you they're going to go off your 2019 tax return. Okay, And um, a lot of people... If they have your wrong bank account information from before, they're still going to try to send it to your wrong bank account. And then it's going to likely bounce back and send you a paper check or a debit card in the mail. Okay, So even people that are on direct deposit can get their checks sent in a paper check or a debit card sent in the mail. It'll be a white envelope with a blue seal that says Department of Treasury. So please look out for those. There's literally hundreds of thousands of people that have thrown them away by accident. Some people aren't even expecting to get them, but if you watch this channel, you'll know to keep your eyes out for a uh, paper check like that because even if you're on direct deposit, they can send you a paper check or a debit card in the mail. So please keep that in mind. Also, there's so many scams going on right now. I'm literally seeing them every day. They're in the YouTube comments. If you ever see It's Jimmy in the comments, we get these imposters that kind of make up their own accounts and they use my profile picture and they just, you know, use my name because, again, you're just, you know, your name could be Bob Smith. You're, you're not the only Bob Smith on YouTube. So YouTube allows you to just add any name and they create the name It's Jimmy. And then they go in the comments and they say, contact me for Bitcoin or contact me for uh, investment strategies. And, and then they try to scam you. OK, that's a scam. I won't say contact me in the comments. And also you'll see a check mark by my name when I do actually comment in the comments because I have over 100,000 subscribers. Whenever you get over 100,000 subscribers, you can go through a verification process with YouTube and it means you're verified. So I will always have a check mark by my name whenever I uh, comment anything down below in the comments. So just keep that in mind and just know that I won't say contact me on WhatsApp or call me in the comments. Those are, those are always scams. And it's going on across all of YouTube. All the popular channels on YouTube are having this happen. Literally, you know, thousands of them, okay? Also, the IRS won't call you. Um, they won't ask for your bank account information over the phone. And don't give your password to anybody over the phone on, on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, or anything like that. Um, if, if, they, if somebody calls you and said to get your stimulus check or to get your tax refund, you got to give me this stuff over the phone. The IRS will not call you. So um, if I can prevent one person or 100 people from, from ha this happening to them, um, yeah, don't give your password or bank account information to anybody at all, ever, over the phone. Um, yeah, just, just trust me on that. Also, I want to go back and mention one more thing about the unemployment money. Don't file an amended tax return, the IRS says. So if you've already filed your 2020 taxes... Um, you can probably file an amended tax return to claim this $10,200 of unemployment income. This will likely mean $1,000 or $2,000 for you of additional stimulus money or 
an additional stimulus check or refund or however you want to say it. Um, but the IRS says as of this point, do not file an amended tax return if you already filed the 2020 tax return. You might be able to in the near future, but at this point, do not. It's literally coming directly from the IRS. So basically, they're not ready for this yet. They might be coming up with a different system to do this or a different form to do this. I will keep you up to date on this channel as we get more information about that, as well as the $250 to $300 monthly stimulus payments that are be going to children or going to the uh, parent who claims the children of uh, the child. Uh, that's the $3,000 to $3,600 child income tax credit, as well as there's a tax credit for adults called the earned income tax credit and for childless workers. Uh, there's new tax credits and... Um, refunds and stimulus checks available for this 250 to $300 per month per child going to be starting in a few months. Okay. Um, we don't have the guidance on how to claim this yet. I will be keeping you up to date on this as well. And also uh, Chuck Schumer, the Senate majority leader is pushing to make this 3000 to $3,600 child tax credit permanent, not just for one year. So uh, it used to be $2,000. It was increased from uh, previously. It was as low as $500. Now, the child income tax credit was increased to $2,000 under former President Donald Trump. It has now been increased to $3,000 and $3,600 for children under the age of six under now President Biden. And the Democrats are pushing to make this uh, permanent or even uh, for more than one year, I should say, maybe two, three, four years. So this will be likely another thing that we'll see in one of the upcoming stimulus packages, maybe the next stimulus package, the fourth stimulus check package. I also expect that they're probably going to throw another $10,200 of unemployment income tax-free for 2021. Remember, that's in the third stimulus check package bill, but it's retroactive for 2020. It's only for 2020. It's not for 2021, any unemployment income in 2021. However, I expect them to uh, throw that into one of the upcoming stimulus bills. There's multiple stimulus check bills and packages and standalone bills that we're going to be seeing in the near future. The $10,000 of student loan forgiveness that President Biden says he is willing to do. And Chuck Schumer says he can do that through an executive order. So that's that's all probably going to happen one way or another for sure. Also, the $200 per month Social Security increase that Biden campaigned on and literally has on his own website, JoeBiden.com. He also wants a $15,000 homebuyer credit. And we already have dozens of Democrats pushing for monthly stimulus checks in the next package, the infrastructure package called Build Back, Be Build Back Better, which Nancy Pelosi says may be unveiled and have the preliminary details of as early as this week. So I'll keep you up to date on all these different stimulus packages, the third package, the fourth package still yet to come out, and more. So if you haven't yet, subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates. After subscribing, click the bell to all notifications to get notifications when we go live. And share this video with your family and friends so that they know all these details and all about all these new stimulus packages coming out. There's a share button down below also so you can share it on Facebook, um, share it through email, share it with your friends through text message or anything like that. You can also click on this video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video teaches you how to start your own business selling products on Amazon FBA. I have dozens of students that have replaced their 9 to 5 income selling products on Amazon, and I teach them how to do that. Click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.